maybe the greatest businessman that ever lived was my friend Sam Walton. Oh, was he a piece of work. Those great blue eyes, energetic, fought cancer two or three times in his life, never slowed him down. Didn't really make his fame or fortune until he was about 50 years old. He was in the retail business, just going along. And he had a great idea. And a great idea he took to Sears Roebuck and to Montgomery Ward. Montgomery Ward's now out of business. All the big companies. And he talked about the model for Walmart. They threw him out the door. What could somebody from Bentonville, Arkansas know? He wasn't a college graduate. Had, didn't have a big name. Didn't have any prestige. Wasn't a superstar. Wasn't a rock star. Didn't have any money. But he tried to partner with these people and they said, no, no, no. So he started himself in a little bitty place in Bentonville. And now Walmart, and he's passed away probably back in 1992 or so. And Walmart's the biggest company in the world, employs more people than anybody in the world. It's just unbelievable retail. He took a, a concept, retail concept, not technology, cash intensive, and took this idea. You know what his idea was? I'm going to give lower prices to the customers, better value to the customers. I'm going to give them the best customer service in the world and build a company. I got to meet him back in the early 80s. Boy, was that a pleasure. He wanted me to come speak at his Chamber of Commerce meeting there in Bentonville. And Bill Clinton, who had, who had been a governor and then lost his governorship, he introduced me at the meeting. And I had many meetings with Sam. I opened up stores with him in Chicago, uh, up in the Chicago area here in Atlanta and Alabama and thereabouts and man I just his enthusiasm was infectious he couldn't wait to get up every day he understood that business was about helping people it also was about helping his employees he let them participate in the profits of the stores and he treated them with great respect and I watched this time and time again and he was the most inquisitive man I've ever known you know, I've talked to you about you got to be inquisitive. you got to be thinking. And he was inquisitive. I'd ride in his old beat-up uh, 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 car, a uh, little pickup truck. He never had a new one. And one day I walked in there and I sat down in there and something was under my seat. There was an old rotten apple core. Hey, he said, sorry. But here I was, you know, in my early 40s. And he was a man who was a giant in industry already, and he even asked me questions. <laughs> it was unbelievable. He asked everybody questions. I went through him in the startup of these stores, and they had the clerks out there just recently hired, and he's asking them questions. How's it going? What's selling? What's not selling? What can we help you with? What's the customers like? What do they not like? He's always wanting to know what the employee, he called the employee's associates. Nobody else did that. And, and, and he respected the, the employees, and he didn't call them associates and customers. And he went to the stores, he put his hands in the soil, and he asked questions. And also, he looked at every little detail. I went to, on Saturdays, he would have, a, still, I think Walmart still has them, he'd have all the managers in, in Bentonville come at 8 o'clock on Saturday morning, have a four-hour management meeting. They came in their hunting gear and so forth, and it was it was great, and it was a big, big celebration, and I, I went to many of them with him. And and this one particular time, he was having trouble with shrinkage. That's when, you know, people are stealing goods out of his retail stores. And the shrinkage was going from, you know, one quarter of one percent to one half of one percent, and that was costing them millions of dollars. So he looked out, this is before email and everything, he looked out into the, into the group of, you know, I don't know, 450, 500 managers, he said, I need your help. I need you to think. I need solutions. We, this is killing us. This is going to knock our margins down. We, this is going to be bad for our business, and we gotta, we got to bring that number down. So here's old Billy Bob over here, and the Billy Bob is going to be in charge of getting all your, your ideas. And I want you to write him, send him a note, and then next week we'll figure out what we're going to do. It's going to come from them. He got his people to think. Solve problems now. He knew that problems don't get better with age. One time I'm in the old pickup truck with him. I said, Mr. Sam, you ever make a mistake? <laughs> Blue eyes. <laughs> yes, he laughed at me. He said, well, sure, I'll be lot." I said, tell me one. Just tell me one. He said, well, well it's a big one. 
I knew people wanted low prices. They wanted great value. And I knew that and I executed that, but what I didn't know, they want low prices and great value, but they want branded goods. And I changed my whole philosophy and made sure that we had at least two or three of the top brands in each category. That's how you do business. He didn't go to college. He didn't have a college education. He didn't really get started until he's 50-ish. Bentonville, Arkansas, no college education. But he went out to do what? To help the customer. Compete with the Sears, Robux, the Montgomery Wards, the J.C. Pennies of the world. But he was going to give better value, a better customer experience. And he also was going to treat people with respect. Calls his employees, associates and got all of his people to think, ask questions, listen to everybody, even a young, aspiring business person such as myself. We all want to be smarter. I hope this is